churches and learning that marriage is not just some subservient lordship, um, archaic kind of relationship, but it's actually a relationship that is also required to be full of love. You know, we said that statement that God made when he saw Adam alone, he said it's not good that he be alone. It wasn't just that uh, he was going to run around, uh, one of the sermons we listened to was, it wasn't just that Adam was going to run around with a knife in the, in the yard and, and possibly trip and poke his eye out, but it was actually, uh, it wasn't good that he was going to be alone because he couldn't have a relationship, him being alone, he couldn't have a relationship. And that was extremely detrimental because he wasn't able to show love. And God is love, and he exists in relationship. And so Adam and Eve had to come together so that they could truly um, experience or share the image of God, which is love. They serve one another, being mutually submissive to each other. So this week, um, message is going to be uh, another category of kind of, I don't know, as I was preparing for it, I was studying, I was thinking about it, uh, even this morning, I probably am more nervous preparing or speaking a sermon than I have been before. Um, but it's, it's the topic of relationships and authority. So how do we have right relations with our authority, or how can we better our relations with our authorities, whether that be in the workplace? Um, I've had different stories and different thoughts that I've had that Sometimes you have a boss and you're like, it was amazing. And some other times there's other ones you're like, this isn't the greatest situation I've ever been in, you know? Maybe I don't actually approve of what he's telling me to do and things of that nature. So how do we have relationship with our authorities? And um, hopefully, I think through some scriptures, through some uh, points this, today, that we'll be able to have, not only be able to view our authority in a different way so that it will strengthen our relationship and again, enable us to share the love of God and relationship, but also even give us some tips. What if we do find ourselves in a place where the authority that we're under, whether it be in our workplace, whether it be even in the land that we live, or things of that nature, that we don't really agree with our authority? What do we do then? How does the Bible help us instruct us and take some steps to appeal to our authorities? And um, hopefully with that so we, we will do that today and do that. So Romans chapter 13. Great place to start thinking about how to relate with authority. Um, we're going to read verse 1 and go through 5 today. Romans 13, 1 through 5. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against the what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers will no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, if it is necessary to, therefore it is necessary, not if it is, there's no condition there. It is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because <coughs> of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Man, you guys know. I had to go there, right? No. You guys know I grew up in a military home, no, like authority thing, right? Two fancy shoes and things of that nature, um, but it was a, you know probably a, 
a weekly, maybe monthly complaint, you know, all of us on the playground get together, complain about our terrible uh, uniforms that we have to wear. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool that we have this rule. Now I don't have to worry about what I have to pick up to wear. Like, it's all set for me. Like, I don't have to worry about this. Like, I, I don't know what it was, uh, maybe the way God wired me, that I just, I enjoyed rules. Like, rules are okay. It made me feel like, cool, is this where, this is, I knew where my boundaries were, and that was about it. Um, I don't know where you are with that, but anyway, what does that have to do with authority? I wasn't even planning to say that. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, so, I'm just, I have a bunch of notes, and they're all in tricky scraps with my left hand. You guys know that I've been having a struggle lately. Um, one, of the, one of the biggest things with having relationships, as we talked about the first series, and I want to bring that into the first sermon, I want to bring that into today, is this idea of, of having fear of being vulnerable. I think one thing when we talk about the relationships that we have with our authority, one of the hardest things about it is, especially as we look and we look a little bit later on this, the scriptures, is this ultimate trust that we have to have in our authorities. So if we say that God is the one that gives our authorities their positions, then it puts me kind of like in this conundrum, right? Like, if, I, if I'm in disobedience or I'm in rebellion towards my authority or I have a problem with my authority, and I, the real words that I'm saying, like, I have, I have an issue with God and what He's put in my life. And I'm like, this is really, this is really hard. It requires me, it puts me in, I get, I, we'll talk about relation, it puts me in a very vulnerable state. Like, I, I'm entrusting my life, so we think, well, okay, care for relationships. Or maybe they're an authority that God given authority. Some people would say, or name it, they're a delegated authority. So God um, puts His authority on parents in the home, and so I have to, I have to honor and trust my parents as, as if they were God. It's like this, like really tough, right? Well, let's look at this here. Um, Ephesians. We were in Ephesians last week, talked about marriage, but uh, we're going to continue in Ephesians because Paul lays out a few kind of like. This is Christian living, this is how you should live in different situations. In Ephesians 6, it, it goes in and talks about the children-parent relationship, you know, honoring our parents, being bright, um, and loving also it gives a little promise, we honor our parents, we get a long life. I want a long life, so I'll continue. You know, we'll have lunch today, that'll be good, I don't mind that. We'll go over there. Um, but then it goes a little bit further, and it goes into this really hard scripture for me. Because in the 21st century, especially when we're dealing with American history and things of that nature, I'm thinking about slavery and all these different issues, and I'm like, this is a super complicated relationship that Paul addresses here. And, and sometimes it makes me feel <coughs> uneasy how he speaks to, these, uh, speaks to the slaves at the time and how they should relate to their authority, their masters. But let's read this here. Um, Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 5 through 8. The slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear, and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor with, when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from their heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each of you for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And it doesn't give, you know, the Bible doesn't, isn't only a, a book that talks about the suppression of different people, you know. There's tons of different kings that we go to the Old Testament and talk about all the different kings and, and bad kings and good kings that ruled over the nation of Israel. And there's also tons of instruction also on the opposite side. So not just as one that is going to have a relationship if we you have a relationship with those in authority, but also the one that's having authority over us. There's also lots of instruction for them too. So let's look at verse 9. Also, this is talking to the master. It says, And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. When I, was, when I was reading this, I put in my notes, I was like, this look, it's like a, like a holy snap that Paul is writing here. Not only is it, he's speaking to the, he's speaking very specifically to those that are under authority, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but here, he says, and masters, don't threaten them, since you know that their master is actually your master too. 
So it puts this also in, the, in if you are in a place of authority. In First Timothy chapter three, it talks about if you want to be if you want to be in leadership or if you want to uh, teach, it's a, it's a really good thing that you want to teach. But there's lots of requirements, there's lots of responsibilities for you as a leader too, because you're putting yourself now in a place of authority. You're taking on a delegated authority. God has put you in that place, and there's some responsibility for you. And remember, God is also your authority. So if you find yourself in a place this morning and you're like, hey, I'm actually in a place where I, I have a lots of authority, I have lots of people under me, there's also a responsibility. Hey, remember, you still have one more, no matter if you're like a CEO of the company, you still have one more authority in your life that you have to obey, submit yourself to, remember that he's the authority over all, that's God himself. So what is this, what's going to help us in um, places where we have to relate to our authorities? What's the, what's the, I, I was, put, I was going to make three points, I was like, no, i got to make one point today. And this one point is that we have to serve our authority like we would Jesus. And if we look at it, we go through a few more scriptures, if there's, you look at any of the, the passages, you can you soak anything out of here about what to, how to deal with authority, we must deal with our authority or relate with our authority as if they were Jesus. This is sometimes really hard to, to separate the position from the person, right? So I have a position of authority in my life. Maybe I had a supervisor. Uh, I remember in, col in college, I was at CBC. I decided, originally I decided, hey, we're going to get married in the middle of our in the middle of college. So that required me to stop playing soccer and get a job. You know, like <laughs> that's the only choice I had. So that's what I did. Maybe I should still take that advice. But anyway, so I I stopped playing soccer. I got the job, and I was um, working at Maranatha. It's a retirement home for all the retired ministers and missionaries of the Son of God, they all meet in this place. And so I was the uh, supervisor of this kitchen. And it was really, going really great. We had this leadership, um, a, a kitchen crew called the Aladdin crew. And they were there, and they were really supportive, giving me training, and like, hey, do this. And then we had a, like a switch of management. Anybody have to go through a switch of management? They're, they're usually not fun. Um, Know, maybe maybe I'll, I'll, afterwards, if there's a story of a positive switch of management, you know, please tell me. That would be great to use that story <laughs> later. But this was not a, a good a good switch of management, and um, it, it was it was such a job that we it was I mean basically minimum wage. The only reason why I could have this job was because being a supervisor, I had uh, a little bit more income, so I could you know pay for my house and things like that with Rachel. Um, but everybody else is kind of minimum wage. And if you've ever been in kind of those hard minimum wage jobs, it was a second shift doing, basically we were cleaning dishes and serving retired age people um, food. And so it wasn't like a glamorous job. And if you've ever been through the job like that, maybe I also work at McDonald's a little bit, there's like constant turnover, right? I mean, like you can't keep a person more than a month. And usually the people that are doing those jobs aren't people that you want to keep around for more than a month, if we're honest. But, so this is just this is constant, this is constant struggle of, okay, so I, I train you for two weeks, we go through the next level of training, and then they quit. And I'm like, okay, next person, you know? And so there's there this one evening, I had a supervisor over me that was, had a, and maybe a personality that was difficult to deal with. Um, and, and it was true, you know, having to retrain these people every week that, you know, we were behind schedule serving people. <coughs> I'm like, hey, well, I got, I got a new person every week. I don't know how to improve this other than let us get some time and some experience. Because um, and, and in any kind of medical, if anybody's in medical position, uh, profession, there is certain, like, there's a time when you got to have this food, so they get the meds, so they can have this. They, they keep their schedule very regimented. It's really good. So, um, so it was the night that came in. Uh, the supervisor came in, we were behind again, this, at that particular time, all three of my um, staff members have been, only been there for two weeks. And one of them particularly was just um, not cut out for timely work. Just, there was definitely some, some um, qualities that could be built up in them. And so we were behind them, and then, not only that, they had new kitchen staff down there, so the food, they didn't bring in the right amount of servings for us. So I'm like, okay, I'm in this conundrum. I'm like, I, I can't cook food. We're not responsible for that. We're just a full serving. And she comes in and just like questioning me a million times, you know, and I'm like, bro, and for the first time ever. So, you know, we didn't talk about this last week. I was, we didn't talk about marriage, but like sometimes our family is the one that see our personality the most. And you guys, I don't know, is that like, I can, you can act a certain way with your family, but nobody else around you would ever see that. 
that's another series. But anyway, so this is, this is one of those moments, though, where <coughs> I probably have exploded at that point to Rachel. She's probably seen that anger before. Um, but I'm in this moment of like panic. My supervisor is yelling at me and questioning me and not allowing me to answer any of my things. And I'm just like, you know, hope on the supervisor there in the middle of the, right in the middle of serving, you know, and afterwards she's like, she didn't know what to do, but she's like, there, here's Andrew and everything we thought about Andrew, and there's this like crazy Hulk uh, reaction, like what is, what is happening, she takes me, you know, so I, at that point, I'm like, I'm going to be fired, I'm like, this is terrible, she takes me aside, and she's like, Andrew, I never knew that uh, you could do that, like, what's, what's happening? Let's talk about this, you know. So we ended up ended up um, the relationship being a little bit better, but um, where am I going? So Jesus, okay, we're <laughs> we've been in we've been in those situations where the authority that we have it's difficult to say her name was Lisa. Lisa is Jesus, and in the moment of terribleness that my attitude towards her, my opportunity in the moment, was to serve her like I would serve Jesus. I can think about, we read this Ephesians thing, and the slaves here um, in this situation are like, I have to, I mean, do you, like I could just see the question in their mind, like I have to serve my earthly master like I would serve, like work to him unto the Lord, but he's so, not like the Lord. Like, don't you? I, I have those arguments with Christ all the time. Like, was like, don't you know what's going on? What is, and I was like, no, yeah, but they didn't treat them like, like they were to serve them like they're the Lord. Work unto them just like you would work on the Lord. Because this is what's so key in this. How can I, how can I rest in that? How can I trust that if I serve my leader in the Lord, it'll be okay for me? Because he says, don't you know that the, 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 the master is both your master and theirs, and there's no favoritism with them. So we can serve our earthly authority like the Lord because our reward doesn't come from our earthly authority. And sometimes that's hard for us because we think, well, yeah, if I work hard, then my uh, earthly authority is the one that's paying my paycheck, right? Like I, I get a paycheck because of my earthly authority. Or I, I, in the U.S., we get freedom because we have this authority system that we have. However, our freedoms, our authority, our, I mean, our freedoms, our rewards, doesn't come from our earthly authority. It actually comes from the Lord. Amen. So if you're, maybe, maybe that's that's sometimes we have that mixed up. So now I think, oh, wow, okay, I'm doing this job, I'm, I'm secure, I'm at peace because of the situation, but we forget to say, no, the Lord is actually the one that's provided us for this, this job. The Lord is the one that actually is the one giving us this authority. The Lord is the one that's giving us this peace. The Lord is the one that does it all. Let's look at some more scriptures. There's some other scriptures that are really uh, just it, trying to hammer this a little bit more. It's Colossians chapter 3. Again, Paul speaking about these authorities and slave and master situations here. But it just says it in another way that just like really good. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 through 25. Again, saying, Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything. Have like this one. And do it not only when their eye is on you, and to, to curry their favor, but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. Man, this is a hard point. Do it not only when their eye is on you to get their favor, but to do everything with sincerity of heart with reverence to the Lord. I love Jesus when he was in, in the Gospels. We've talked about this a few times. He, he doesn't deal with exactly what we do. He deals with our heart in it. So in the same way, he's saying, okay, don't just do these good deeds that you know that you're, would gain the favor with your authority. Actually do them with sincerity of heart that you're actually serving God. Even when their eye is not on you. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of freedom in that job. I was, I was the way my, all of my supervisors were down in another building. So I, had, I was just like free reign leader dude up there. Um, and there's shortcuts, you know. I, was, I, was, I, was, I, was, right, I took shortcuts. So there's, we had to mop this huge, amazing floor. So I 
we kind of learn how to do shortcuts on how not to clean exactly and do the list the way we were supposed to. Maybe not the greatest supervisor. But um, with sincerity of heart, do it unto the Lord. And this isn't true, not just with when we're talking about completing the task, whether they're looking at us or not, but when, when we're completing the task, what is the condition of our heart when we're doing so? We've all been in situations, I know if I do this certain task for this person, then it will gain me, I'll get a little closer to them. And hey, you know, when races come up, our review is coming up in a, a few months, and I want to... The key to relationships... We, is, is in relationship, we have to both be committed, or relationship, we have to be committed to selflessness. That's what we talked about last week in the marriage part of it. But even in a, in a workplace environment, it has to be, we have to have made up in our heart that we're going to be selfless. It's not for my gain. Actually, it's just out of reverence for the Lord that I'm going to work and do these things. Let's read on 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as workers for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. I love this again, making that point. The, the singular point, whenever it's dealing with authority in the Bible, is that we must serve our earthly authority as they were the Lord. Why? Because it's, it's not them that reward us. Their inheritance is much larger than that. It's what we receive from God Himself. But this second point, I want, I want to make this. At the end, it's in verse 25, it says, Anyone who does wrong will, will be repaid for their wrongs, and there is no favoritism. This is really an um, important thing that I think I wanted to make this a point of sincerity this morning, that I know that there is uh, maybe in a, a room as many different people that we have, many different backgrounds, there may be uh, situations where our authority has been um, downright evil, that they've requested evil things of us, that they have even abused the position of authority that, that God themselves has given us. And so I want, as we are looking at authority, and we're saying, okay, serve all of our leaders, uh, serve all of our authority as if they were the Lord. And you say, and we rightfully can say, wow, that's just plain evil. What do we do in those situations? Because like we said, it takes an amount of vulnerability to be able to trust our leaders completely with a direction of, for our lives. And sometimes when we put ourselves in vulnerable places, there's, there's backlash to that, right? There's, there's hurt that may come. There's, there's maybe some difficult situations you guys are thinking about. What do we do in those situations? We must trust also that they will be held accountable for the misuse of their authority they have done in their lives. And like I even, I even wrote out even here, just even saying from my heart, to some of your hearts that you, to some of you that have been, there's been abuse or, or misuse of authority, to even say sorry to you this morning. If, if, if nobody has ever apologized before for the abuse of authority that you've had in your life, like even in this moment, I would, I would say, you know, I don't even want to use the word sorry, but say, hey, I recognize that there's, there's some hurt and some difficulty that we've all faced because of authority. And yes, God has given them authority in our lives, but sometimes it's used against us. Mm -hmm. And I, will, I want to ask that you... Uh, I want to say sorry. I want, I want to apologize to you for the difficult situation that authority has had. But I also want to encourage you to trust in the Lord, that He will repay. He is the one that's going to reward those who are, that, that have loved Him and have honored the things that He given and he's, he is going to deal with the wrongs that have been done in, in our lives. So this next uh, part of this, I wanted to give us seven, <laughs> seven steps, seven, seven things that when we, if we find ourselves in a position where there is an authority that, say, we read the Bible and we're like, okay, this is all perfect. It would be perfect if the masters were to treat the, the servants perfectly. Like, that would be excellent. Like, I would love that. If we just lived in the utopia, lived in heaven, that would be great, right? 
<laughs> well, we know we live on Earth. There's still sin that's destroying relationships and causing. So, what are some steps? What are some things that we can do when we need to make an appeal? When, hey, when an authority in our lives requires something of us that we know doesn't line up with the Word of God, and we're like, okay, what do we need to do? Or what if there's a situation where the authority is is so um, on on top of abusing their authority and it's causing ill effects in our lives? Maybe it's causing hardships in our family, or maybe maybe it's as simple as hey. I need a day of, of vacation, and I don't even know because I know the personality of my authority that I can even request this day off, even though I need it because I have a doctor's appointment. I don't know. It's a, 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 Rich was working some daycares. I owe her now for sixty dollars, right? Or so. Yeah. Anyway, she says every time I mention her name, my hormone. money. But um, <laughs> worked in some daycare situations where she's like, I can't even request. I don't even know if I can request off my doctor's appointment that I absolutely need because of the, their personality. I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's think about what are some biblical uh, steps, uh, people dealing with authority in the Bible, that can help us in these situations when we do find ourselves, hey, I know my authority is from God. I want to serve them like they're the Lord. So we have that part right, but it's still difficult. What do we do in those situations? So let's look here. Um, verse 13. I wrote notes, and then I didn't want to rewrite them again. With my left hand. All right. First uh, important step when we want to make an appeal, when we know, hey, there's something going on in our workplace, we need to change, or maybe there's something even that I would would request of my um, of my authority. I think the first uh, important step that we need to make sure is that we are in right standing with them. So we just said the number one point about authority in the whole Bible is serve the leader like. They're the Lord, and we're about to make an appeal to them. We're about to request something of them, but yet we haven't treated them like the Lord the whole time? There's no favor there with the authority. We come before the authority. You know, um, the scriptures in uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew 7, 21, people come before Jesus, right? And they say, Lord, Lord, and Jesus says, not everybody that calls me Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom. So there's, there's first, we, we have to be in a, in a position of right standing with our authority. We have to be okay, serving this person. If we're the person that's gossiping in the thing and everybody knows about it, or we're the person that every time they request something of us and we're like, nah, and they're like ignoring them, or like taking a shortcut and they know it, we well, don't, no, it's not going to work, okay? So, first point, be in good standing. Already be the one that's serving them as they're the Lord. Like, like giving your life to them, going after them, doing as they told, being humble about it, having a humble spirit towards them. We have to be, number one, in, in, in right standing. And secondly, um, I believe we see this, that we have, to, we have to have right motives when we're approaching our authorities. Again, I made that point just earlier, but we can't have a selfish motive. It can't just be all about us. After we go going before the authority, we have to say, hey, actually, this is um, one of the notes, that it's, it's, it's good to be in the, all right. It's when we make our appeal, the right motive is to be concerned for the authorities. What? Yeah, so when we go before the authority, it's not just, okay, this is what I'm going to get out of it, but hey, this is how this is how this appeal, this is how this situation is going to affect you. Did you know that when when you do this, this is how people, this is the opinion they have of you? We're, we're the right motives, we want to encourage them, we want to lift up our authority. So we're going to we're going to be concerned. For who they are and how they are in the situation that we're going through. Not just the selfish motive, what can I get out of me approaching my authority? No, how is this going to benefit them? Uh, number three, um, is it, we have to think about is it the right timing to make our authority, to, to, to approach our authority with, with this request that we have, this change that we want to see? You know, one of the things that um, was so impressive, the story of Baxter. That's the story of Esther. Uh, Esther gets a, it's like the perfect time. There's, there's a king looking for a new queen, and going through all the preparation that she did to approach the king, even getting the whole nation to pray. They had this, the, 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 um, the, I want to forget his name in a moment. Name it, there you go. Thank you. Uh, this is Haman. He, uh, so he wanted to destroy the Jewish people, right? All this, all this great thing. Esther gets in this position here, and she's getting ready to approach. She's like, has this 
awesome moment. Okay, now I have to go approach the king. All of the people in the land, they're all like, their whole lives are on my shoulders. I need to go approach the king. Everybody pray for me. And then it gets to the moment where she's going to go. And, um, and Esther says this statement. And this goes along with another point we'll make later. But he says, if I perish, I perish. So, so he couldn't just go before the king without an, an appointment. Like he's the one that calls you to himself. So Esther going before him was like a pretty big deal. Like she, her life was all mine. You know, but she, she's like, you know what? The timing of this whole situation, it's all, it's all on me. I see the opportunity that I have to go before him to, to, to change the direction of the whole nation. And you know what? If I perish, I'm going to perish. I, I'm going to go for it. The timing, the opportunity that God's given me at this point is right. And sometimes when we're, we're dealing with authorities, sometimes it's just not the right timing to go before the authority. Or sometimes it is right. God gives us a, a moment with our authority where their heart is turned towards us and our heart is turned towards them. And we have the timing. We have the, the right moment that God is right. And what is, this, what is an example that we see in Esther is this whole situation had been bathed in prayer. Holy Spirit, you know those moments in life where the Holy Spirit gave you that right timing. The, the whole thing was bathed in prayer and there was right timing for her to approach her king to make this appeal to him. Number four, and this is, this is an important one. We're going to make an appeal. We're going to go before the, our authorities. Is that we have accurate information. If the person to whom we are speaking to knows or is, um, and uh, is the authority that we're going to go speak to, if they have information that we don't have, that, that they know we're unaware of, then they're not going to look favorably upon our appeal. This is really a different thing. When, when we're going before our authority, sometimes, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a pretty big know-it-all. Like, I, I know I can think through every situation. I know all the details of everything. But sometimes when we go before our authority, and they actually have details about situations that we're unaware of. So we have to make sure, if we're going to go before <coughs> an authority and hey, make this appeal, that we have accurate information about what's going on. This is an example in uh, Nehemiah, in verse one through seven. See, so he's about to rebuild the walls, right? And he's going to, and he's praying, and he's asking God for favor for this task that he's about to accomplish. And he is aware that, that the people of Israel have not been following the Lord. So, in his petition, in his appeal to God, he's like, "Hey, God, I understand. We have not been a people that has loved you. We've not been a people that have served you. We, un I understand. Our position is totally out of favor with you." And that's an important step when we're taking, when we're going before an authority. Hey, I, under, I understand where we stand with you. I understand this information. I understand these, these, these situations around us. That it, maybe, maybe it's not for my favor. And it's, again, the motives, my humbleness before them, my selfness. But then having accurate information and knowing, hey, sometimes it's not for our favor. Maybe we're not in favor. Maybe it's not an easy decision to, to grant us what we desire. But we're going before them, hey, this is where I'm at. Here's the facts. Here's what's going on. So five again. Um, so let's see. First is being right standing. Make sure we're serving him. Second, right motives. Um, thinking about their their best, um, not our own. Third is it the right timing. Has God ordained it? Is there is there a clear path? Or are we trying to force the situation? Four. We have accurate information. We're making our. We're, we're making sure that. Not only are we aware of our faults in the situation, um, but, but we want to have the, the accurate information about all, all these things. Fifth is a right attitude. So there's three attitudes that we can have. One is reverence. We want the same kind of thing, thinking about them as the Lord. We're revering them um, just like we would our Lord. Three, we have loyalty. No matter what, like Esther said, no matter what, if I perish or not, I'm, I'm going for this. I'm, I'm loyal to their decision no matter what. I am three. I am I'm grateful. I have a heart of gratefulness. I have the right attitude about this. I, hey, I know you're my authority and you don't have to give this to me, but hey, this is what my request is for you. Six, the right words. Taking time in prayer, making sure we're, we're, giving, we're approaching them with the right words and that we're not going to be misunderstood, that we think through it. I, I sometimes, when, after I 
spend some time learning this, writing out what I'm going to say to them, make sure that they think that what I'm going to say is not going to be misunderstood, misjudged by the authorities in my life. And then last is having the right response. What if our appeals get rejected? What if people go through all this work, we make the right decision, what if our appeals are rejected? Our attitude still has to be a place of gratefulness being underneath their authority. That God is the one that has placed them in our lives and is actually for our benefit. So our heart then changes. Man, these things are all, these, are, these things are so hard. They're still, they're, they, it is. But I think it's a blessing when we, when we approach our authority with this way, we're coming in the right attitude so that it is a possibility that there's, there's things that are changed for our favor. That's given us, I mean, there's a story of Daniel, and Daniel's a lion, and that's right. Ezra. All, the whole book of Daniel, uh, talking about how to deal with authority that in your life that's, that's evil and contrary to the thing. So there's also other times where, you know, like, so Paul um, dealing with Peter and how Peter was treating the Jewish um, people, as, uh, the Gentiles at the time. And Paul just, like, stood up and, like, hey, this is perfect timing, this is perfect attitude, it is, I'm calling out of fault because it's not lining up with the gospel. And, and Paul just, like, boom, said it. I'm getting blank stares like some people don't know that story. I'll have to go, I will have to do a, a series through Romans. But there's, there's, there are times, that don't, I'm not promoting, okay, just submit and do nothing your whole time. There are times that, we, hey, would you take a complete stand? Daniel said, I'm going to pray because the king said, I can't pray, I'm going to pray because I'm honoring God, right? But it's all in the right motives of how we do this. All, all in the right attitude of how we, how we approach our authority. So then, because if all that happens, if we approach them in the right way, then, like we said the, the, for the series, then there's an opportunity for us to show the love of God. Our relationship, how we relate with our authority, is a demonstration of the love of God. I'll close with this verse. In second, in, in second, in First Peter two, verse twelve. Let's turn there. First Peter, chapter two, verse twelve. It says this: Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong. They may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that He does us. Do we have this opportunity with our relationships, with our authority, that that they will see our good deeds, they will see how we how different we are as believers, that we treat them just as we would treat the Lord, that they will see our good deeds and they will glorify our God in heaven. And I I believe that that that's the exact opportunity we have in every one of our relationships. The way that we express our love for one another in relationship allows others to see the love of God, see who God is, and they glorify Him. Because, because it's not normal to have a good attitude towards authority. It's not normal to be to work with all your might, no matter what, in no matter any situation. It's not normal to do that. It's not normal to not cut corners when the eye of the authority isn't on us. But we as believers have this opportunity that we demonstrate the love of God by how we love our love our Lord as we treat Him as the Lord, and it changes, it changes everything. And I'm not working for it. I'm not I'm not working for cool evil Lisa. No, I probably need to work that out of my heart. <laughs> I'm working for God. I'm working to God. I'm everything, everything that is required of me, I'm working unto Him. And in those moments where, hey, this is a tough situation and I need to appeal, I need to, I need to have something changed so that it, it can so that it can make my life easier sometimes, right? I trust that Proverbs 21 says that the heart of the king, the heart of my authority is in his hand, that he's going to be able to turn it whatever way he desires. Right? So it's all about God being in control. There my day, he is my authority. No matter what authority has been placed in my life. This morning, as we as we close, I think there's there's two.
two ways um, that we can respond. I think one, I think there needs to be um, a response of, of repentance. I think some of us in, in this room, and I was, I was praying this week and just thinking about this, like there's some of us, yeah, that we need to repent for the wrong attitude that we've had towards our authorities. That we have not treated them or, or we have not looked at them as if they were God, as if they were the Lord. So that's, I, think, I think that's the first response. But then the second response is for us to walk in grace, for us to have grace in this. Because if this is what God asks of us, God asks us, hey, treat our authorities as if they were the Lord, I can't do that in my own strength. I need, I need some help. I need God to change my heart that I can serve them in such a way that I, that I see them just like they see the Lord. Help me with that. Give me grace. I think our first response, and um, I would ask mom if you could do a little piano, but it's repentance. God, forgive me for not looking at the authority the way that you designed it to be. That actually it is, it is from you that you've given me the authority. It's for my good that these authorities are in my life. Father, forgive me for that. I said, like, Father, would you, would you give me strength? I, I need help. To be able to treat them the way that you're asking me to. That's, that's sometimes it's hard to, again, separate the position from the person. It's like, I just see them. I don't see you, God. Help me with that, that I can see you in them. Why are you giving them to me? I mean, that Romans 13 passage is like crazy. God, every authority is given to us by God. I got some evil authority. I got some weird authority in my life. God, what are you doing? God, help me see. What, what are you doing? Why, why is this person in my life? Let's pray this morning. And I, I want to um, invite you. Because I know how personal this specific part of relationship is. Like I mentioned, even some, some of us have been in a situation where our authority has been evil and has caused some wounds and hurts in our lives. So I think there's going to be there's going to be opportunity this morning for, for prayer for that. God will help them some forgiveness and coldness and healing in those areas. But man, I really think God's just calling and say, would you repent for the way that you view your authority? Because maybe we find in our heart that we have had it all. So these altars this morning are, are open is to come and respond and uh, Pastor God will be here for the next, uh, we're going to be here for about 10 minutes. I'm going to give 10 minutes for us to respond. Say, hey, if you're this morning, you say, man, I just need to repent. I need to get my heart right. I want to invite you to come on board. And we'll, we'll pray with you that, that there is uh, repentance and freedom in your heart. If your heart, if you're this morning, say, hey, I need some healing. There's been some abuse and, from authorities. Hey, we're going to pray for some healing. Or if there, you, you want some strength, hey, I need some help. I need some strength because I have, I have some difficult, difficult authorities. I, I, need, I need some strength in that. We're going to pray with you for that. So I'm going to pray, and then you can respond. You can come in your seat, or I even invite you to come forth so that we can lay our hands on you. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you that you have been teaching us about relationship. Relationships are uh, extremely vulnerable. They're open. We uh, allow people to know who we are. We trust people with our lives. And Father, I thank you that you are the one that uh, sets up all authority. <coughs> all authority is from you. So Father, I pray now that you would give us grace to respond correctly to our authorities, to respond to them just as we would you, with complete humility. Father, I ask God that you would heal those that need healing this morning, and how they maybe had abusive situations with authority. God, I pray that your healing would come in. Father, Lord, you would, you would uh, transform, Father, those spots in our hearts. Father, for, our, for those of us this morning, Father, that just, that we just need to repent. We need to ask Father, your forgiveness for the wrong attitude that we've had towards authority. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that today would be a, a day of reconciliation, of, of making um, relationships whole. Father, I, get, I pray that you would give us courage and faith this morning as we're responding. To respond correctly and rightly to your voice in our hearts. In Jesus' name.